Hey guys, it's Elizabeth of ERWplans.com on Instagram, ERW underscore plans, Etsy, ERWplans.etsy.com. Today, I'm going to show you five ways that you can use your passion planner for something other than task and time management. So I see a lot online, what should I do with my passion planner if I don't have a lot of time or task things to plan? And especially with uh, COVID and being locked down for six weeks or maybe being sick for multiple weeks, it's, and I've experienced both this year myself, it's kind of, it feels defeating uh, to look at a planner and it's all blank. And I get that and, and I definitely feel you and you don't want to also waste the planner. I mean, you've spent a lot of money on this. You don't want to waste it. Um, I use mine for tasks and time management mostly, but remember I run four planners. I have two content planners, my Amplify and my large passion planner. I have my medium, which is my uh, overview time and tasks. And then I have my daily, which is like my personal assistant. But this isn't the first year I've used multiple planners. So I kind of wanted to show you a few different ways that I've used my planners in the past. And then I'll show you a weekly setup so you can see me kind of plan these different kinds of set uh, planner setups. The first one I have here, this is, I used a, a small planner as a health and fitness planner one year. Um, you can see that, of course, I, I scheduled my uh, Eagles game because that's very important for my health and fitness <laughs> to watch football. Um, but essentially the setup was I color coded my breakfast, lunch and dinner, and then I had space to put what I'd eaten. I uh, color coded in my exercise my Weight Watchers meeting. Um, in this case, I had a work event here, which I needed to plan for. If you do, if you do um, Weight Watchers or another meal plan type system, one of the big things that they key you in on is make sure that if you're going out to eat, you kind of pre-plan for it. So in this case, I did kind of block off where my fall event was, and that way I could pre-plan my meals around that, knowing that this was gonna be a huge points black hole, essentially. And I actually ended up not being that bad. And then of course we have mental health for therapy, um, bowling I could have put as exercise, but I like to put it more as my mental health social hour. So that was how I did that. Um, over here I had my points tracker, which uh, Chelsea had designed for me, and I have this um, prescription medication tracker up here from EBGB, uh, and I went over her shop stickers in the uh, sticker video, so if you want to grab one of these, her shop link is in the sticker video. Of course we have to-dos, and I had taped in some bills down here, but what you can do down here is track your exercises. If you have a specific routine um, of exercises, like you wanna do uh, 25 push-ups and 25 sit-ups like four times, at, you, you could track that down here. Um, or you know, if you're doing like couch to 5K, you can track your progress down here. So that would, and I would just set each week up like this. Um, I put in in advance the breakfast, lunch, and dinner ones. Um, oh, and I had my water tracker from Chelsea up here. Um, so I put the water tracker in first. I would plan out my exercise routines. I did this, the exercise routines according to the time of day. You don't have to. I put my breakfasts, my lunches, and my dinners in based on when I ate them. Again, you don't have to. I like to see when I ate because it helps me know, did I get enough fuel for what I needed to do? Is that why I was crashing? Is that why I totally fell off the wagon and ate an entire pint of Ben & Jerry's? Um, I found that helped out a lot to know what time of day I was eating and what exercises I was doing when to get a routine together for myself. So that is how I set up a small uh, passion planner as a fitness planner. Then, um, similarly, I use, I have these stickers in my shop to set up a passion planner as a chronic health planner. Uh, I have uh, depression and uh, PTSD and 
uh, some mild ADHD. So I have a lot of symptoms that I want to track. Um, I use a mood tracker, as you know, um, which you can find in the shop to kind of keep track of my moods to see if they uh, correlate with my uh, cycle or if they're correlating with specific events, if they're specific triggers. So I made this sticker here, which you can see you can rate your moods every day. And I put it at the bottom here because I had intended to use this part up here for actual time management, but it fits these spaces. So you could actually just move this up here and take up your whole time block here with mood tracker, symptom tracker, and pain level, because I get migraines. Um, any activity that you did, so you can kind of try and correlate activities to moods and symptoms, and make sure you take your medication AM, PM. And I also have the self-care tracker, so you can make a commitment to self-care every day. If I was going to move this sticker up here, I could then have a spot at the bottom for the daily self-care tracker. So I could use that to keep track of any kind of chronic symptoms. Um, after COVID, I have some chronic symptoms that I never had before, which is interesting. And using a sticker like this um, is really good to kind of keep track of that to see the progress I'm making. Um, I can use instead in down here in like the space of infinite possibility, I can put my doctor's appointment results in there. Like how did my EKG look? Um, how did my blood work look? Um, and then any kind of follow up recommendations I can do in my to do list. Um, so if the doctor says you need to take B12 every day, am I taking my B12 every day? You know, add that in there, you know, just list out what you're taking and what other changes you need to make that the doctor recommended. Uh, so this would be this is something that like I would take to my doctor's appointments with me. So that way I can say, yeah, this because they ask you, you go into like a physical therapist or a mental health practitioner or your regular doctor. And the first question is always, so how have you been? And my answer is always, OK, because <laughs> I don't know how to answer that question unless it's been like a really bad week and my mood is crashing or if I've made like an emergency appointment because there's something really wrong. It's just a gut reaction to be like, I'm OK. So I'll bring this with me and then I can be I can kind of while I'm waiting for my appointment, look over how have I been the last couple of weeks and then I have a better, well, the last couple of weeks, my moods have been around a five or a six and my pain level has been about a two or a three and I've experienced these symptoms. You can also, if you use this tracker down here, you can keep this space open for um, basically like journaling, uh, keeping track of things that, have, that triggers, that have triggered your symptoms um, or working through, if you're doing uh, mental health therapy, uh, working through anything like, oh, my mood was like a two today. I woke up feeling like shit. I had like two spoons. If you do like spoon theory, I had like two spoons and these are how I used my spoons. And this is kind of how my day played out. And then the next day, see how your self care from day one impacted day two. So that would be how I would use this as a mental health or physical health or any kind of chronic illness, uh, chronic disability type journal. And you'd have a year, you could just, after a year, you'd have all your symptoms, everything in here, um, all of your plans. It would just, you, you could use your back pages for any kind of reports, prescription tracking. It just becomes like your health journal. And it's one of the really, really important ways I've used a pl passion planner in the past when I was trying to get into a medical routine, uh, get my medications under control. Uh, that kind of thing. So, and I'm probably, if the COVID chronic symptoms that I have, which is just really bad blood chemistry and some occasional heart issues, don't change, I'll probably go back to doing this. And I could do a video showing you a full setup. So, we have that. And then we have a few other um, suggestions or ways I've done this in the past. This one, um, you can use your passion planner as a habit tracker. Um, in this case, I set it up for my social media habit of I'm going to do my blog post every other day, my Instagram habit, my Facebook habit, my Miracle Morning habit. I can check off at the top. Uh, these All of these stickers came from Chelsea's store, by the way. Um, and so it's less of a doing a to-do list and more of a, I have these healthy habits I need to maintain. So I want to make sure I'm maintaining them and I'm gonna do that with my passion planner. 
So that's how you can basically maintain a healthy routine. Um, you can put your, you can write out like what your miracle morning should be over here. Uh, down here, you can keep track of the results of what you've done, or you could even just turn these into like, just take plain note paper, glue it in and turn it into just a blank doodle journal, whatever, especially if you're doing um, like meditation and mindfulness, you could put coloring sheets in here. Chelsea has some coloring sheets in her shop that you can buy and put in this space. And then you can just do that as part of like your 10 minute meditation in the morning or mindfulness practice. Um, the other thing I wanted to show you is journaling and memory keeping in your planner. Um, I mentioned earlier that I had uh, COVID this year. And so I started, this is actually my, started as a symptom tracker before I designed and printed out the actual symptom tracker. This is actually kind of the inspiration for it. Uh, each day, these were my symptoms. This is what I was feeling. Um, my stack of medications that I was taking uh, right after diagnosis. Um, also keeping photos of like my husband doing work from home here. Um, one of my favorite uh, Tiger King memes, you know, it's just everything that I want to keep track of like a regular journal. I just squeezed it into here. And honestly, this is about like two tweets worth. It's not a ton of space, but you can get a good amount of writing in there. So just you know it, it's like those some lines a day planners that's how i basically used it as like a some lines a day so i can just keep very brief like i said tweets of um symptoms tweets of things that happen stick photos in there and you can as you can see if on a particular day in this case it was thursday you run out of room you just go right down in here and keep on journaling uh same thing with over here you can add a flappy panel which I have another video that shows you how to add a flappy panel. Um, but yeah, that's that's basically um, journaling and memory keeping in your passion planner. And you can use washi to cover these timelines up if it really bothers you. You could use stickers. Chelsea has some stickers in her shop that will cover that up. You can decorate it or as you can see with this, I didn't have the energy, quite frankly, with COVID. I had zero energy. Like my spoons were in like the negative amount of like getting out of bed. Are you freaking kidding me? I had like zero. I was at spoon deficit. So there was no decoration, as you can see for like when I had COVID. There was just, nope, didn't do it, didn't do it. But this is where I started. And um, it's a, it, it's a really simple way to just keep a journal when you don't want to write like two or three pages of you're not a writer, but you do want to keep track of the things that happen, the important things of your life. This this is how I would do it. And then similar to um, journaling in the memory keeping, I use this as a travel planner and I have a video uh, planned where I'm going to show you how to turn a passion planner entirely into a travel planner um and travel memory keeping journal but this specifically is how i did a travel planner back in february um and traveling by the way is probably how i got covid so that's fun um i have the travel kit in my shop so if you wanted to do a kit for yourself like this you can go get the full kit it has the packing list has your departure hotel return information. If you, it has a rental car sticker if you're renting a car. And then it has just time blocks. So you can block off times to do things if that's what you wanna do, but you don't have to. You can put in your pictures from your Sprocket or your Instax. It's um, what I did here. You can use it once again to your pre to-do lists. I know I said not to-do lists. I said not time tracking, not to-do lists, but part of travel journaling is making sure you have your packing list and making sure you have all your, you know, do you have your passport or do you need to update that? Um, do you have a real ID if you're staying within the country so that you can travel? Nails and waxing, very important before you go on vacation. Um, your bucket list for things to do. Uh, when to leave for the airport. I find all of this, if you're, if you're not regularly, you know, during, um, time tracking, it's kind of a hybrid of time and task tracking along with the journaling, memory keeping aspect of it. And this was a business trip. If this had been a trip for fun, as I'll show you in the other video, 
I would just, you know, kind of what what did I do today? Instead of like planning out the things I was going to do, I would go, what what did I do today? Where did I go? What did I do? You know, what interesting things did I see? Have tons of pictures to go with that. So that's uh, two different methods of memory keeping and journaling. Uh, the traveling style and then of course the actual like writing and journaling style of that. So the last idea that I had for a way that you can use this is if you are a writer you can use this um, your weekly for uh, NaNoWriMo and um, I know I had talked about that previously um, and I'm going to do a full video on how I do NaNoWriMo uh, which is National Novel Writing Month every November um, but you don't have to just do it for November if you're going to write at any time like a big project like a novel you can use your planner to help you do your noveling. In this case um, I already had put in my NaNoWriMo goal sticker for November I gotta write 5,000 words it's kind of right there um, so I have it broken down into 2,000 word chunks and I can just fill this in as I go. And this is actually designed to go in the monthly section, but I wanted something different in my monthly section. So I put it in my weekly section, but this is supposed to go here. And then we have our word sticker. So every day I can keep track of how many words I've written that day. But what I'm gonna show you is I also have stickers to help you actually do your writing because one of the things every year, including this year, I've set out to do uh, NaNoWriMo and first couple of days I'm really strong. I'm just like banging out stories and then I get into like day four or five and I get stuck. I get that writer's block and you know you hate when that happens um, and I have no idea what I'm writing and I just get frustrated and I can't stare at the screen any longer and I've tried using different programs like Scrivener. Um, instead of Microsoft Word or you know Google Docs and it just it's very frustrating. So this year I've put together a few NaNoWriMo kits that are in the shop right now. Uh, one of them is this uh, weekly kit that comes with the goal tracker here and the words tracker sticker here. It also has some write-in trackers. But what I've also done new for this year is a daily writing prompt set. The sets come with two of these sheets. Um, this is the November color sheet that matches the November kits. Uh, it also comes in black or any of the colors, the so one color per sheet that's available in my shop. Um, and they are prompts to help you write. So instead of having a timeline, I would cover this timeline up and I would just start with my stickers and I would just start with at this little kind of six to seven hour here putting in my sticker uh, what I wrote yesterday and if I was doing this in real time I would probably wait and uh, do one sticker at a time so like what I wrote yesterday would go first and I would write it in and then once I knew how much space I had taken up I'd go with my next sticker where's the plot headed but I'm just gonna show you right now what one day of this would look like and then we'll skip to down here and then the last sticker this sticker I didn't use last year when I was testing this theory uh, this kit out um, and what I would probably do in practice is do the timeline extender down here that you can download from the website to give myself more writing room but essentially I would put these in here and get a very fine point pen and I would go, okay, what did I write yesterday? And I would summarize everything I'd written the day before. And if I couldn't remember, I would reread it without trying to edit, just reread it. Where's the plot headed? This is where planning comes in. And I am going to be planning with you my novel this year um, on the blog. There's also a kit in the shop that you can use to help you plan your novel. And so we will ref to basically turn your passion planner uh, daily into a uh, novel Bible, as they're called, uh, show Bibles, novel Bibles, movie Bibles, uh, the, the big book that you reference for everything. If you have any questions, you go to that book. Um, in this case, where's the plot headed? I would go to my plot section of my um, 
daily that I've turned into my novel Bible for the month of October because we've got 31 prompts for 31 days to help you plan out your novel. And I'd say, okay, what's the next thing that's going to happen? So at the end of this scene, let's say the protagonist has, we've reached the, you know, dark night of the soul. The protagonist is really down and I left off with them being like, ah, crap, I'm just going to go home. I don't want to do this adventure anymore. Where's the plot headed? They have to have, the next scene is the epiphany, like where the thing that motivates them to keep going forward. I would write out exactly what that is. Um, Sally discovers the magical MacGuffin that makes her realize, oh, she needs to move forward. What do I need to do to advance the plot? Take what you, where you left yesterday, what the next beat in your story is, finding the, you know, feeling really depressed, finding the magical MacGuffin. What do I need to get from here to here? Well, she's got to go to the place to find the magic. She has to stumble upon the magical MacGuffin on her way home. So she has to take a detour on her way back to home, at which point she stumbles on the magical MacGuffin. And then last sentence, next sentence, like I said, I probably want more space for. This is where I would write the very last sentence that I wrote the day before. I'd put it down here. And then I would write out the next sentence that follows it. So if it's Sally felt very dejected and turned around, we're going home, she said, write that here. And then the very next thing is that next step. Does she actually literally take a step on her journey? Is that what starts her toward finding the magical MacGuffin? Or does someone reply to what she said? Um, do rocks fall and everyone around her dies? Like, you know, what is the very next sentence that I'm gonna write? And you can basically take, this becomes your, where you're left off and this is where you're headed, this will inform where your sentence needs to be, what your next step is, what your character's very next step word um, intuition is. So you would use those every single day in your planner and every day you would just go through and do this for what you'd done the day before. And I found that when you do that, you write rewrite that last sentence rather than just staring at it and then you write that first sentence, that gives me the motivation to just go, boom, I know where I'm going. I know how to get there. And I've just given myself that push to get into like my flow. So that would be how I'd actually use my planner every single day. I'm not time tasking. I'm, t um, I'm not timing things. I'm not tasking things. I'm just basically brainstorming to get to the next level of my novel. Um, as far as down here is concerned, if you got really, truly stuck, Sally's in dejected, she's turning around, she's going home, but she needs to find the magical MacGuffin, but I haven't planned out where she finds it yet, I can use this whole space down here. I can list out all the things here that need to happen, all the places, all the characters, everything that needs to happen in these next seven days worth of writing. I have this space to mind map, um, this space to draw what my characters look like, draw a little mini map of where they are in the story at this point, which I often find helps if you can actually kind of see where they're going, just make a little map like this is my world. And this is where they are. This is where they have to go over the next seven days. And then I can basically keep this out and open while I'm writing and refer to this, refer to my other planner. So. That is five different ways that you can use your planner that don't involve times or tasks. So what I'm gonna do now is show you how you could set these up in your planner. I've kind of given you an overview of the different ways you can use these different ideas. And now I'm gonna just set up a weekly spread using one of the five different ideas. I'm going to start with the memory keeping journaling because that's one of the easier ones to do. Um, I would set up my week using a sticker like this because this is going to give me a very quick overview of what I'm watching, reading, listening to, making, feeling, planning, loving. Um, so that I would put this sticker in here if I'm going to memory do a memory keeping. And then I would go in and print out some, like my picture, um, my souvenir, whatever it is that I want to save for the future. So I would put in my sticker and I would fill out 
all the categories there. And then I would start with my week. And you could use a marker, I'm using fine liners, whatever. Um, so you say, okay, on this date, my, my daily focus, the big thing that happened was I went to a fashion show, let's say, so did that, which was exciting and awesome. And then if you have this picture, now this is a regular wallet size picture, so it's going to be a little bit big. Um, if you print from a sprocket, it also, as you can see from my other ones that I showed you earlier, they print a little bit large as well. Um, but I do include with every order these little photo corners. So you could just grab a photo corner because this is just a regular wallet size picture um, like you'd get from any kind of photographer. And you just take your little photo corners here and you just use those to glue down your photo. You can also, of course, put glue stick on the back or the Tombow um, mono permanent adhesive, which I'm a huge fan of, whatever. But just wanted to kind of show you how you could make it a little deco. Boom. And then let's say that this was your favorite designer. Um, you'd be like, OMG, favorite designer, new favorite designer. Cool. And then like, you could put like her website, memory keeping essentially. And then of course you can also journal over here, like, Oh my God, so hungover today. Uh, I should have stayed up so late at that fashion show, but I met this really cute guy. So, journaling and memory keeping. Sticker I use, stick in whatever kind of image you want, and then just kind of notes, do doodles, whatever, memory keeping. Um, the next two are kind of related, which is your symptom tracking and your healthy habits tracking. Um, for symptom tracking, I'm not going to use the stickers that I have, although I would totally recommend it. I'm going to show you how to use just your highlighters. And I would go through each day of that week and I would fill out what I was doing. So this would be my mood and then my little ranking scale here. And then we'd have our symptoms and I like to leave a little bit more room in my mood section so I can really kind of describe what's going on. And then down here, I'm actually gonna turn this bar into like a pain level. My triggers. Which is anything that's gonna trigger your symptoms, whether that's uh, physical or mental health symptoms. I'm gonna have my activities that I did today which can be exercise, but not necessarily. If this is about just how many spoons you have during the day, it could be something as simple as like, I brushed my teeth today. Um, medications. And I would go through the week and set up each week like this. And you could even up here for today's focus, make this your vitals, which was really key for me when I had COVID to getting a diagnosis because they weren't testing back then. Um, so for example, I could say, okay, my SPO2 was like, well, today it's like 98%. Uh, resting pulse, today is 85, so still elevated over what it was pre-COVID, right? Uh, body temp, 96.9, because I'm low. I could say my mood's like a five. I'm feeling productive. Meh. Also, uh, today's symptoms, I have mild headache. Pain level is like a two. I haven't had any triggers yet, but if something did happen, uh, let's say um, I ended up with a migraine. I might be like, what did I do right before I got the migraine? And let's say that was uh, stress. And then I could say specifically what had happened, like almost got into an accident. And I would use different symbols for each trigger. So like if I'm driving and someone almost hits me and I freak out and then I get home and 10 minutes later, I've got a migraine, star here, star here. So I can match up my triggers with the symptom that they triggered. Uh, my activity level, I had, a, we'll say, we'll, we'll call it a spoon index. And I would say, let's say, you see, I have like 
five spoons today. So what did you do with them? Like, I showered, ate food, took a walk. Medications, took my medicine in the morning, self-care. I'm gonna make a self-care commitment to take 30 minutes for a stupid TV show. We'll call it a trashy true crime show. Cause you know, I love my trashy, trashy true crime shows. Okay. And then if I had like a doctor's appointment or something, I could go over here. And then you could just write out the results of your doctor's appointment, like EKG normal, blood work, call it bloods. Um, if you're if you're doing therapy, scribble that in. You could do something more. you know, fun, funky, designery draw things, but therapy notes, notes, plural. And then it might be something like catastrophizing or whatever it is that I went over in therapy. Okay. All right. If it's physical therapy, what did you do? What were your activities over here? Cause I'm really big on making this like health and fitness. I would be like medications. And we'll say, let's say we started these eight one through eight. Let's say our doctor's appointment was on the on the third, through or on the second. Let's say eight thirty, September technically. And then I would say, okay, I had my Wellbutrin, and I'd start the week off with what my medications when I started the new medications and what, okay, um, and micrograms. And then let's say I have my doctor's appointment on the second. Meds starting on 9-1 or 9-2 in this case, in my imaginary world. And then let's say we lower the Wellbutrin. We wouldn't. I haven't lowered it in years, but let's say they lowered it. Let's say they added in Celexa at 30. And then let's say we up the B12. And then we add an iron supplement. All right. So that would be basically how I would run this as a health journal. My daily mood tracking of my vitals, my, my mood symptoms, triggers, etc. Um, notes from doctor's appointments, notes on medications that I'm taking. So once again, when I'm going through this at the end of the year, I can see when did my medications change, um, what was going on with my doctor's visits, what was going on with my therapy, and it's just basically your entire medical history in a book that you would keep around. Um, the next thing I'll show you is uh, tracking as a health tracker. Uh, for that, I'm going to grab some stickers. Uh, I would start my health tracker, which is a little bit different than your symptom tracker. Um, symptoms are more for like a chronic illness. This is just for if you're trying to be healthier every day. And I would go across and do my entire week like this. Um, I set my water goal. Okay, and my steps, my AM, PM medications. And then I'd go in with my bars here and just set up my breakfast. Now you don't have to do these at the time you eat. Um, I talked about earlier how I used to track the times I ate so I could see how that correlated to moods um, and energy levels. But if that's not something you need to worry about, you could just go ahead and put these in at just like whatever day you felt like putting them in, whatever time, however much space you need to write. They left way too much space for breakfast, so I'm going to put a snack between breakfast and lunch because I'm usually hungry between then anyway. I 
need about two lines for that. And then if you had stickers, you could also get the stickers for your exercise or you could just put in, you could just draw it in like I'm doing. Okay. And then if you had, you know, anything important, for example, uh, you had physical therapy, you could just do that in. And since we're not using the time blocks in this situation, you could make it as big or as small as you want to remind yourself. Just to remind yourself that on Wednesday the 3rd you have PT. And then I could just write it in. And you can even go over what you worked on. So then, as the day progresses, you can go ahead and you can fill in your water tracker for how much water you're drinking. You can put in however many steps you took. Check off your medications or your vitamins in the morning. You can take care of your breakfast. So coffee. For my breakfast today is coffee and more coffee. Your snacks, mine was avocado toast. Lunch. I'll probably have curry for dinner. And then if you are tracking your points, assuming that these coffees were zero, um, you could just, you know, track your points here. It's usually a four. And then this is a Jimmy Weight Watchers recipe is four and a six. And then you could just actually put a total area down here. So 10, 22. And there's your daily points. Exercise, let's say we did one hour spin. And so then that becomes a negative point. I think that was usually like negative eight points, I think, for an hour. And then physical therapy, what did you do in physical therapy? Uh, so, uh, worked on stairs without crutches, which would be hard to do a spin class if you're on crutches in the first place, but there you go. That would be an example of how you would use this as a health and fitness tracker. Um, the next thing I wanted to use this for is to, uh, to show you how to use this is as a habit tracker is slightly different than what we've been using. It depends on the habits that you're trying to track. Um, if you're doing like Miracle Morning, I would start with that. And I have this sticker from Chelsea's store. And if I hadn't started over here with my currently, I would put out over here what exactly my, my commitment for my Miracle Morning is. I have a little space up here, my this week's focus. So I would, you know, write out that my uh, six steps, let's see, would be my silence, and then what I'm committing to, meditation, my affirmation, and whatever your affirmation is, I can do it. Visualize. One big sale. Exercise. I'm already committed to being spin, so we'll say spin. And then your what you're reading. Uh, let's see. Let's say I'm reading Dare to Lead. And then your for your scribe or your writing, you would put in. Like I said, I would do this down here because I have more room. I put in what I'm writing. And then every day, you just go through here and track off your habits. The other way you could do it if you didn't want to do the sticker is just go through here. Assuming you don't want to do a sticker, remember. Go in here. And we'll make it daily habits. And then what are those daily habits? And you can, you know, say whether or not you did them. So, and then any, you know, or whatever other daily habits that you want to have every day, you just go through and put them 
your daily habits section, and then where you can check them off each and every day. Um, in addition to that, you could keep track of with either stickers or writing in. You could do like currently reading. And I said earlier it was dare to lead, so we'll say dare to lead. This your daily habits can have some overlap with your healthy habits, like walking or step school. And then let's say it's 250 every hour. You could actually, you know, write out your hours or just put it as 250 every hour or like 8,000 steps. And then you could do a did I section. And since this is regular, we'll put this in here. Put out trash, feed cat, scoop litter. tidy dishes anything that is a regular habit that you want to keep track of down there okay um so then for the final one that i'm going to show you is once again the writing how you would use this to keep track of any kind of writing that you're doing um and i'll show you how to do it without using the stickers that i did although I would totally encourage you to buy the stickers from my shop. Uh, we'll go up here to today's focus. Make sure you can see what I'm doing here. And this is gonna be our word count. If you're doing nano, I would recommend going through and putting in the goal for the day. So your goal for your day one is 1,667, because that's how many you need to write per day, essentially, to uh, complete 5,030, or 50,030, sorry. And then you'd have the space to put in what you actually did. And then you can just go ahead and do the same thing that I did as stickers as a write-in. So yesterday. Yesterday's rating. Next plot beat. Get from there to here there to here and then last sentence okay so trying to think of like a famous novel I could use. So the last scene we'll have here, we'll say in yesterday's writing would be like, um, Esther goes into Carl space, goes. The next plot beat is, um, uh, mental health turns around, dark night of the soul, turning it around. You can follow Hero's Journey even if you're not doing an actual heroic epic. This is how Hero's Journey plays out in the bell jar. Uh, to get from here to there, she has to be discovered. And then you would write out whatever the very last sentence that you wrote here, and then the next sentence that you have to do to move forward from there. And that would be how you would use your passion planner in order to journal, keep track of chronic symptoms, keep track of your health, keep track of your habits, or keep track of your writing. Five different ways to use it that doesn't involve your uh, a daily to-do list or a daily time tracking. As always, thanks guys so much for watching. Please follow us online. 
New videos are released weekly, so make sure you subscribe so you get notified of the newest content. And don't forget to please like, comment, and share this video. We go live every Wednesday, so make sure you stick around for the next video coming up. Thanks again.